Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I am going to discuss about scheduling job in ASP.NET Core using Hangfire. Now for scheduling a job, let's say if you want to schedule a job which will run every hour or every 5 minutes or 9 pm every day, it's really tedious to do it using threads or timers. Hangfire is a framework which abstracts all this implementation and gives a real easy to use fluent API for configuring this kind of job using cron expression. So to start that, first I am going to create a new project in ASP.NET Core. And I'm going to name it as hangfire.demo. And I'm just going to go ahead and create an empty project. I'm going to keep it as .NET Core and sp.NET Core 3.1. So once the project is created, first I'm going to go and add the NuGet packages necessary for hangfire. So I'm going to add hangfire.core, which is the main hangfire NuGet package we need. After that, I'm going to use the hangfire.asp.net core, which supports integration with asp.net core. And next thing I need is a storage provider. So hangfire internally uses three main component. One is a hangfire server, which is responsible for going through the schedule and run. One is a hangfire client, which schedule job. And then the hangfire storage where jobs are saved. So for this example, I'm just going to go with memory storage and that's probably the hangfire storage we are going to use in most of the scenarios unless we want to share a job across different processes in which case we might choose to use SQL Server storage or some other storage providers so once the namespaces are added what I'm going to do is first I'm going to add the hangfire service so I'm going to do dot add hangfire and in the config I'm going to first set the compatibility mode and I'm going to set it at 170 and for serialization I'm going to have use simple assembly name type serializer and then also, and I'm going to also use the default type serializer. And finally, I'm going to use the memory storage provider. For that, I'm just going to add the namespace. So, so once I do that, I can use the memory storage. Okay, once that is done, then I'm going to also do add hangfire server. This will add the server. Once this two is done, what I'm going to do is now it's time to configure a hangfire service. But before that, what I'm going to do is the other feature that Hangfire supports is a full-fledged administrative UI where we can monitor all the jobs. And for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Hangfire dashboard. Once I do that, the dashboard will be enabled. And for scheduling a job, I will add the background job client. And here I can say background job client dot nq and it takes a delegate and here I can just have simple console dot write line hello hang for job. So this is the first job that I'm creating. This is not too fancy. I'll get into creating recurring job, but let's just start with a simple job created through Hangfire background job client. So once I do that, once I have everything set up, I'm going to run this application. 
And once the application is started in the console, you can see that it is printing out all the information about the hang file. So starting hang file server, it has a worker count of 20. These are the workers which are responsible for scheduling and running jobs. And then here you can see that it has printed out the one time job that I created, which is hello hang file job. It's just doing a printout. Now if I go to the web URL and if I type in hang fire here, this is the hang fire dashboard and it's showing the real time graph. And if I go to the jobs, I can see that there was one job which was succeeded. And this job is the console.write line statement uh, that I printed out. And currently there is no recurring job. So once that is done, now I'm going to create a recurring job because that's more interesting and that's the case where, you know, we'll be using hang fire most of the time. Creating just enqueuing a job, I mean, we can just do a task for achieving the same thing. So let's show uh, I recurring job manager. And in the instance of recurring job manager, what we can do is we can do an add or update and we can give the job a name. So let's say run every minute and then the actual job and the job can be again a console dot right line and just test recurring job and then finally the cron expression and for that I can just give the five stars which means it is going to run every minute now let me start the demo once again now this time you can see it has started as expected and we can see the scheduled job the normal scheduled job is printing out hello hang fire job and in a minute we're going to see the recurring job showing up but in the meantime we can go back to the hang fire and here now we can see that in recurring job we have our id or the name that we passed that is run every minute the cron expression and then console dot write and next execution in a few seconds so Let's go back to the console and in a few seconds we should see the console.write showing up and now if we go back to jobs we can see that there's one succeeded and we can see two right now immediately just a few seconds before the test recurring job has occurred so we see one uh, execution of that job and our recurring job is still running and it now it is showing the last execution time. So, so this is a very basic example of how to use hang fire. All we had to do is add the NuGet package for hangfire.core, hangfire.asp.core, and hangfire.memory storage. And after that, it's just literally a few lines of code to set up the hang fire and run a job every minute. And now it has executed the second time. If we go back here, we can see it has executed three times. And in the recurring job also, it is running as expected. And the next obvious question is, can we use it as uh, part of the dependency injection as well? Yes, we can. Since the hang fire itself is added into the service collection, which means both the recurring job manager and background job client are available from the DI. And this is the, this is the reason why as soon as I added these two to the configure method, the objects were passed along into this function by the ASP.NET Core framework because it, it could pick it up from the services collection. But to demonstrate that, what I'm going to do is instead of doing a console.write, I'm going to just create a new class and an interface. And I'm going to name it as print job. It's a simple class, it'll just have a public method, print. 
and in the print it will do the same thing it will just do console dot right line and it will say and fire recurring job and here I'm going to extract an interface, I print job. And once I do that, I'm going to go into the startup. And here I'm going to say services dot add at singleton. And here I'll say I print job and print job as an instance. And here what I'm going to do is instead of console dot right line so here another thing I'll do is I'll also add the service provider and instead of doing a console dot right line I'm going to do service provider dot get service I print job dot print So now you can see that once I run this, I should be able to access the iPrint job. So essentially I can completely, now the business logic can reside inside the print job class and it can be completely tested out. Whereas the schedule can be completely isolated from the actual logic of printing because we are not going to test if Hangfire is running every minute because it is supposed to. We just want to make sure our logic is testable and it can be achieved through this mechanism. So I'm just going to run it again. You can see the default message is printed out. And now if I go to the Hangfire dashboard now, I can see the jobs, the recurring job is set up to run print job dot print method. And if I go to the jobs, I can see one succeeded, which is the default one. And next in few more seconds we should see that the we should see that the recurring job is printing out and here we see that the hang fire recurring job printout method came from the print and here we can see it is a success now and this is our recurring job last execution few seconds back it shows what time it got executed so this is all I had to cover today with respect to Hangfire. There are definitely a lot of other features of Hangfire which are pretty interesting. But this is something which I found to be extremely useful, especially when we want to create recurring jobs. It's super simple. As you can see, it's just a matter of four or five lines of code to set it up. And the dashboard is really, really powerful. And if we have multiple we can do things like trigger now. If we do that, it will trigger the job. We can delete a job. We can do a lot of things. Deleting job is going to delete from in-memory storage for the time being, and it's not going to trigger anymore. So let me just go ahead and do that. Okay, so there is no recurring jobs, and we have three total printed out, and now even if we continue running this application, we're not going to see any more printout because the job has been deleted from the UI. So this is very handy if we have to delete a job at some point in time. So this is all I had to cover today. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you have not subscribed to my channel and you have been getting real value out of my channel, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much.